Hi everyone, Kevin here. Today, I wanna show you my favorite top five best free software. Now, I personally use all of these on a near day-to-day -day basis, and I think you'll wanna use them too. If you wanna jump around this video, feel free to use the timestamps down below. All right, let's check these out. This brings us to the first piece of free software, and that's Audacity. You can get it at audacityteam.org. I've also included links in the description down below, and I'll have links for all of the different software that I highlight today. So what is Audacity and why would you get it? Well, right here, it's free, open source, and also cross-platform audio software. So basically, you can record audio and then you can also edit audio using Audacity. And it has tons of very powerful tools. So let's say, for instance, that maybe you wanna to pull together a podcast. Or even for my YouTube videos, I use Audacity to clean up my audio for my video. To download Audacity, you can come right down here and click on download. Once you finish installing Audacity, you'll land in an interface that looks like this. Right up here, you can choose your audio source or the microphone that you want to record. Over here, you could also choose your speaker. Here, I could check the levels, and once I'm ready to record, I'll simply click on this red record icon. And right now, look at that, I am recording. Once I'm all done, I can click on the stop icon and I could play it back to hear what it sounds like. Over on the right hand side, I have all sorts of different tools that I can use to manipulate the audio. I could even add additional tracks. Here for instance, I'll click on tracks and let me add another track. So here I could add any number of audio tracks. I also have access to a massive collection of different effects. Here I could amplify my voice. I could also apply a compressor if I wanna tighten up my audio a little bit. Maybe I wanna hear what it sounds like if, let's say I were in a cave, I could apply some echo. Here I could even remove background noise and you could even add different plugins into Audacity. There's an auto-tune plugin, so if you've ever wondered what you would sound like if you wanted to pull off some T-Pain, you can do that. And it sounds like I know a little about this. I've actually done a video on how to use auto-tune in Audacity, and I've included a link in the description. And just as a warning, you're gonna hear me sing, so hopefully that doesn't scare you off. If you wanna watch an in-depth tutorial on how to use Audacity, I've also included a link to that in the description. This brings us to free software number two, and that's DaVinci Resolve. You can download it at the following website. Once again, I've included a link in the description down below. So what is DaVinci Resolve? Well, what is DaVinci Resolve not? It has so much functionality. It has a video editor, you can color grade, you can edit sound, you could also create effects. It has tons and tons of functionality. In fact, Hollywood film studios and TV studios use it to pull together their projects. DaVinci Resolve is a freemium product. That means that you get the base functionality for free, and if you want some of the more advanced functionality, you have to pay. For my YouTube videos, I use DaVinci Resolve, the free tier, to pull together all of my videos, and it has most of the functionality I could ever want. To download DaVinci Resolve, scroll down a little bit and then click on the Download Now link. On the download page, you have your standard DaVinci Resolve 17. That's the free version. There's also the studio version, which is paid, but once again, the free version should give you pretty much most of what you need. Once you finish installing DaVinci Resolve, you'll see an interface that looks like this. And once again, DaVinci Resolve has a ton of functionality. Here, for instance, I'm in a media page that allows me to manage all of my different media files. Here, there's a dedicated cutting view, which makes it really efficient to cut your various clips. There's also an editing view, and this is where you start to pull together your story. And you have lots of different tools here. It makes it really easy to pull together your storyline and to deliver and communicate your message. Down here, there's an effects view, or what's called the fusion page. And you can use a node layout to pull together some truly impressive 2D and 3D effects. Over here, there's also a color grading view, and this is truly industry leading. And there's also something called Fairlight where you can modify the audio of your project. Once you're all done, you can render your project on this final page. 
At first glance, it might feel a little bit overwhelming to use DaVinci Resolve. However, I've included a link to an introductory video in the description down below that'll get you up to speed really fast. And once you start using it, you'll begin to appreciate all of the power that you get with DaVinci Resolve. As one downside, DaVinci Resolve requires a pretty powerful system. And if maybe your computer is a little older or it's unable to run DaVinci Resolve, I've also included a link to a video in the description that goes through all of the different options for free video editors. And some of them can work on any type of system. This now brings us to free software number three, and this one's called OBS Studio. You can download it at the website obsproject.com. So what can you do with OBS? Well, you can use it to record your screen and you can also use it for live streaming. On my YouTube channel for my intro where I appear in front of the camera, I use OBS to record my camera. And also for this screen recording that you're watching right now, I also use OBS for that. Right here, you can install it on any platform. Once you finish installing OBS, you'll see a screen that looks like this. And yes, I'm using OBS to record OBS, it's possible. Within OBS, at first glance, it might look a little bit complicated. And over here on the left-hand side, you can set up various scenes. And within a scene, you can add different sources. So right here, I have my browser window as one source and I have my video as another source. I could click on this plus icon and you can add all sorts of different sources to compose your scene. You could also add all sorts of different effects and filters. You could set your different audio levels. You could set scene transitions. And once you're ready to record, you could click on start recording or you could stream to any one of the most popular services. Let's say you wanna go out to Twitch, Facebook, YouTube. You can do all of that through OBS. Now, there is a ton of functionality within OBS. And of course, within this video, I won't be able to cover it all. But if you're interested in learning more about OBS and you wanna go deep on how to use it, I've included an introductory video in the description. This brings us to free software number four, and this one is called the VLC Media Player. You can download it at the following website. So what's so good about VLC and why do I recommend it? Well, the great thing is you can pretty much open up any type of video file. In fact, anytime I get a video file, if let's say I try the Windows Media Player, sometimes it won't work properly, but anytime I try VLC, it's pretty much guaranteed to always open up properly. To download, simply click on this download text. Once you finish installing the VLC Media Player and you open up a file, you'll see an interface that looks like this. And it looks a little bit more old fashioned, but don't let that deceive you. There are tons of different capabilities in here, all sorts of different effects, all sorts of different filters. One of my favorites is I have an ultra widescreen monitor and a lot of times you'll play, let's say a DVD and they add the black lines on the top and the bottom. Well, you can crop those out using VLC. Or let's say you have a media file and you wanna convert the type. You could even click over here and then you can convert from one file type to another file type. So although it's a media player, it has a lot of functionality above and beyond your typical media player. This brings us to free software number five and that's LibreOffice you can download at LibreOffice.org. So what is LibreOffice? Well, it's an office productivity suite. You get a whole bunch of different applications that'll help you be more productive. Within LibreOffice, you get all sorts of different applications. Here's LibreOffice Writer, and you can use this to compose different documents. There's also a spreadsheet application called Calc. You could also pull together presentations using something called Impress. You have a database application called Base. There's also a tool that you can use to write math equations, simply called Math. And lastly, there's another vector drawing app called LibreOffice Draw. And as an extra bonus of Draw, you can even open up PDFs, any type of PDFs, and you can edit them using Draw. So with LibreOffice, you get a ton of value and you get a bunch of different applications that allow you to be more productive. That wraps up my favorite top five free software, but there is one more that I use all the time that I wanted to share with you. And this one is called paint.net. 
And although it's called paint.net, you download it at the website getpaint.net. Once you land on the homepage, you can download it right here. And this is a simple but yet still powerful image editing application. Once you finish installing, you'll land in an interface that looks like this. And the thing that I like about paint.net is it has most of the image editing tools that you would ever need. Of course, you have applications like Adobe Photoshop. You also have GIMP as another free alternative. But personally, I think those are a little overwhelming where they have far more functionality than you would ever need. Here in paint.net, it pretty much offers everything that I need. You have all of your standard image manipulating tools. Here you can choose different colors, you have history, and you could even use different layers. On my YouTube channel, I use paint.net all the time to pull together my thumbnails. Here, for instance, I'll pull in a photo of myself that I would typically include on the side of one of my thumbnails, and I take all of these photos in front of a green screen. Just as an example of what you could do with paint.net, right up here I can go up to effects. I'll go down to photo, and right here there's the option to apply a simple green screen. When I click on that, that'll simply remove the green background from this photo. That's just one of the many different effects that I could use to manipulate what photos look like. One of the great things too is you can add all sorts of different plugins which extend the power and the capabilities of paint.net. All right, well, let me know down below in the comments, do you already use any of these applications? To see more videos like this, please consider subscribing. All right, I'll see you next time.